What's going on, YouTube? Today I bring you my 2021 NFL season predictions before the draft has happened. We're past free agency, just one more step to go in this offseason, and uh, we'll be basically on to a new season. So, yeah, let's uh, get straight into it. Starting off with the AFC West, uh, you can see here, you know, Z's for the winning the conference, X is winning the playoffs. Yeah, I don't think the Chiefs win the conference, but uh, this is what I see happening for the AFC West. Chiefs, you know, they cut their tackles. I, you know, assume they'd probably pick at least one early in the draft. Um, and so, uh, you know, they're still a very, very good team. Obviously, they still have Patrick Mahomes, Tyreek Hill, Travis Kelsey. I mean, $16 million for Joe Tooney is an overpay, but he's still one of the best guards in football. Now, we'll see if he remains that because we've seen it before with Patriots guys leaving and not being the same. Uh, but we'll have to see, you know, overall, this Chiefs team is still very talented, 14 and 13, which, yes, by the way, there are 17 games now, if you didn't hear. Chargers at 12 and 5. I think this is going to be a resurgence here for the Chargers. I mean, if you look at their team, there are some holes, yes, but overall, they are a very, very strong team. Justin Herbert was great, and I think, honest, they would have made the playoffs pretty easily if not having Anthony Lynn as their coach, because he made some holes horrible play calls, some terrible game time decisions. He was just a horrible coach. And I really think they would have made a strong push in the playoffs last year if they didn't have him as their coach. This year, I don't know if they're going to be that good because they do have some holes. Quarterback is a bit of an issue. Um, you know, they do definitely need to get someone at linebacker because right now their starting guy is probably Kaiser White. Uh, and their offensive line, while it's upgraded, you know, they do need a few more pieces. So uh, it's a team that they're very strong, very good players, and I love the new uh, coach, but, you know, I think they'll make the playoffs, but I don't know if they're going to go that far. Broncos at 10-7 and 7 are in a tough position because the Broncos actually have a very, very good roster. I mean, that's a, that's a playoff roster, but unless Drew Locke takes the next step, they're going to be on the outside looking in. 10-7 and is obviously still a much better record from 5-11. and 11. Uh, and it, it's not enough to make the playoffs a year, but it's obviously an improvement. Um, if Drew Locke can even play decent next year, like if Drew Locke's just a top 16 quarterback, they're making the playoffs. They're that good of a team. If they're able to somehow get Deshaun Watson or Justin Fields, I also think they're easily play. Well, Deshaun Watson, they're a Super Bowl contender. But, you know, Justin Fields, I think they'd improve. So, yeah, they're, they're a team that they're very good, but there's just a few things holding them back. And then the Raiders, I don't know why everyone's so high on this team. They suck. I'm sorry. But, like, Derek Carr, I mean, he he's already a meh quarterback most of the time. He's, like, the definition of mediocre he's always like number 16 in the season out of quarterbacks but now that they've completely dismantled their offensive line for no reason he's just going to be running all game and, and then raider fans are just going to blame Derek carr for it i mean josh jacobs is still a, a really good running back and there's a nice duo there with kenny and drake now receiving unit did get better for sure but the defense i just i thought i felt like all they had to do was just address defense and free agency in the draft, and they'd be a very, very good team. But instead, they had to dismantle their O-line, and the only defensive player they signed was Yannick Ngakwe, who is fine, he's consistent, but he's not like a game changer. I see the Raiders at 6-11. and 11. I think they got worse, honestly. They still have some very good pieces, but I just don't like the way they went about this offseason at all. Moving on to the AFC South. Uh, I have the Titans on top. You know, they definitely got better on defense, like, a lot. However, at the same time, they also got worse at a lot of positions. Pass rush quickly went from one of the best, or one of the worst to one of the best. However, their se their secondary is just completely destroyed now. I mean, Kevin Byard's the only capable secondary per uh, personnel in that entire defense. And they lost Corey Davis, Adam Humphreys, and Johnny Smith. Now, obviously, they're still a run-first team, but that does kind of take the passing game out of them. Uh, you know, they did sign Josh Reynolds, who is meh, and they'll probably draft a receiver at some point early, but I don't I don't think they got worse, but I also don't think they got better. I still have them winning the division and making the playoffs because of that. The Colts are another team in an interesting position because I think they have a very strong team. Um, however, I think they're kind of a little bit worse because they had a few key, uh, key players let go. You know, even with all the cap that they had, they didn't really sign anyone. Like, they retained a few of their own guys, let a few guys go, and that was really it. Now, their big move this season was obviously trading for Carson Wentz, and there's the chance that he returns to his MVP-like self. 
If he does, I don't think it's going to be in his first year here with Indianapolis. So I think, if anything, they're the same. But I think they're worse. Uh, so I, I don't see him making the playoffs this year. Uh, they're just in a weird position. Jaguars definitely going to get better, but just by a couple games. They're still a very lackluster roster. Yes, a ton of draft picks. Personally, I was not a big fan at all of the way they handled free agency. There were so many good players they could sign, and they just didn't. I mean, they like let, let's think. They signed uh, tight end. Who who did they sign? It was the did they? I don't know if they even signed anyone at tight end. Um, if they did, it was a small player. I mean, offensive line they didn't do anything. Defense like I mean, they were gonna sign Tyson Alulu and then didn't because he went back to the Steelers. Shaquille Griffin's a nice pickup, I guess, but like, yeah, they didn't really handle free agency well at all. So I don't know if the draft's going to make them that much better. They'll be better, but not by a lot. And then the Texans, in my opinion, are going to be the worst team in football next year at 1-16. in Like, regardless of whether he gets traded or he just sits out, Deshaun Watson isn't playing for you next year. If this team was, uh, what was it, either 3-13 or 4-12 with Deshaun Watson... Do you think they're going to be any better without Deshaun Watson? Yeah, this team's going to be really horrible next year. They signed a bunch of meh guys to one-year deals, but, like, they're still a horrible team. They're bad. And then moving on to the AFC East, the Bills at 14-3 and three as well still don't win the division. Um, or the conference, I mean, they do win the division here um, pretty convincingly. I see them being pretty much the same as last year. I think they're kind of at their ceiling. They just kind of need a few more big players to make that Super Bowl run. Then the Patriots making it back here already with 12-5. and five. I mean, Bill Belichick went out and just... I mean, the Patriots won free agency. Like, they did. That's end this discussion. The Patriots are legitimately already Super Bowl contenders. But if they get a quarterback, it's done. It's over for the entire league. This team is so freaking talented. Like, the only holes I can even think of on this team right now is maybe corner maybe quarter cornerback maybe linebacker an elite defensive lineman and a quarterback that that's literally it like you know if this if the, if bill belichick can somehow get his hands on justin fields per se it's over even mac jones or trey lance i think it'd be very tough so this is a very good team quarterback is going to hold him back for right now but yeah patriot or er, patriots dolphins 11 and 6 uh but do not make the playoffs um, yeah, you know, they're, I, see, I don't see them getting any better. Uh, again, with free agency, they signed some guys. You know, Will Fuller. Uh, I mean, they traded for Benardrick McKinney. Yeah, I mean, I don't know. I don't think Tua's going to, like, take that jump next year that they're hoping for. They'll get a very good player regardless this year in uh, Jamar Chase, Kyle Pitts, or Panay Suell, uh, which will make their team better. But they're just in a very tough division. This division really quickly went from one of the worst or the worst to the best, I think, uh, or one of the best. See, so, yeah, it's a very tough division, a very tough conference. At 11-6, and six, I don't see them getting any better than last year, and they don't make the playoffs. And then the Jets at 7-10. and 10, If you really look at it, the Jets are a very, very good football team. I mean, they pretty obviously tanked last year because they could have been much, much better than they were. Um, yeah, I see them improving a good amount. Now, 7-10 and 10 is obviously still nowhere close to playoffs, especially in this conference, and uh, still last in the division. However, big improvement over 2-14. and 14. Yeah, especially with Zach Wilson, once he develops and, you know, they've signed some very good guys on the team. I really like Robert Sala. I think that defense is going to be one of the best in football next year, even with the lackluster secondary, because um, that front seven is really, really good. Yeah, I, I think the Jets are going to improve, but they'll still be at the bottom of their division. And then the AFC North. Yes, I have the Browns winning the conference at 15-2 and two because, I mean, just take a look at this team. I mean, are you serious? Like, Baker Mayfield, check. Nick Chubb and Kareem Hunt, check. I mean, Odell Beckham, Jarvis Landry, Donovan Peoples Jones, check. Austin Hooper and Austin Bryant, check. The entire offensive line, check. Like, linebacker could maybe use an upgrade, but they got Anthony Walker. The secondary is amazing, and they have some key pieces returning. The only, the only hole on this team right now is, like, a player across from Miles Garrett. Otherwise, this team is just so amazing. Kevin Stefanski, like, and, uh, 
I forget, I'm forgetting his name right now, but the new GM. Like, they need to be praised for years to come on how they built this roster. I'm expecting them to get some sort of good defensive end in the draft, and this team is just so complete, it's crazy. Then the Ravens at 12-5, and five, and... I mean, I just, again, I don't see the Ravens getting any better. I don't think, I think Lamar Jackson's at his ceiling. Um, you know, they'll get Orlando, uh, Orlando? They're, Ronnie Stanley, uh, their left tackle back. Yeah, I just, I don't see him improving. I don't think they really did anything in free agency that would show they improve. I just kind of think like 12 and 5 is their ceiling as a team. And they might make a decent playoff push, but I, I just don't see them be much better. The Steelers at seven and ten. Uh, it's pretty. It's pretty weird because this would be their first losing season in the Mike Tomlin era. Um, but I just that offense is bad. Like it's bad. You know, you look at a team like the Bears, who had the worst offense in football last year, but one of the best defenses. I feel like that's exactly what the Steelers are this year. One of the best defenses. Because we all know that defense is elite. I mean, that defense is very, very good. But. The offense is just so lackluster. Big Ben is done, in my opinion. They lost James Conner, and their running back right now would be Benny Snell, which is a, a downgrade over an already poor running back. Their receiving unit didn't get any better because they, I mean, because it didn't get worse, but it didn't get better. Uh, Vance McDonald retired, so you just got Eric Ebon in the tight end room. The offensive line is a shambles. Like, the offensive line is really, really bad. So yeah, I just don't see the Steelers doing that well this year. And then the Bengals, I think, improve, again, a good amount. Uh, well, not a good amount. They improve over their last season. But I still think they're missing uh, on defense, really. Because the offense is great. Joe Burrow looks fantastic. The receiving room is amazing. Uh, the offensive line has gotten a bit better. But, you know, I really hope they take Penny Suell. And that would be the offense complete. The defense, it's just lackluster. Losing, a, losing William Jackson is definitely going to set them back. Uh, you know, they could have signed so many different guys. They could have even just brought Carlos Dunlap back. But instead, they signed Trey Hendrickson to a big contract, which worries me. Because that might be one of those contracts where, oh, he has one big year and then just drops off after that. So I think defensively, they're still really missing the mark. Offensively, they're good. They're set for the future. But defense, they just they need some help. Moving on to the NFC West, we have the Rams coming in here at number one, and this is this is a tough decision. This like this is a tough division. I mean, any of these teams can come in one, two, three, or four. Realistically, this could completely switch around, and it would still be realistic. So it was very tough to choose, but ultimately, I had them all one game behind each other in the Rams, Cardinals, 49ers, and then Seahawks. You know, let's discuss this. The Rams. I feel like it was literally just quarterback holding them back because Jared Goff is met. Matthew Stafford is such an improvement over Jared Goff that I think is that, that this these new these next two years are going to be their years. This is their window to win a Super Bowl, and I fully believe they can do it either one of those years. Um, the Cardinals they got so much better, dude. Like they're like uh, let's go over it. I mean, yeah, they lost Kenyon Drake, but they could take a running back, uh, and you know Benjamin I I like personally. Um, yeah, Kyler Murray, I, I think he'll be even better. He could be an MVP candidate. Um, they signed AJ Green, which, I mean, a, a nice veteran presence, I guess. But, I mean, what I really liked was the offensive line. They do not need to go offensive line in the draft. DJ Humphreys had his best season. Justin, H Justin Hughes is a serviceable guy. But they got Rodney Hudson for, like, a fifth-round pick, I think. Or a third. It was one of the two. What a steal. And then they signed Brian Winters. One of the most underrated offensive linemen in football. And they have a ton of good young depth at right tackle. Then they, you know, they signed JJ Watt, obviously. Like, this team just needs to up, uh, like, this team literally just needs to upgrade corner. And this is a Super Bowl team so easily. Corner, I think, is going to ultimately hold them back from the Super Bowl. But this is such a good team. 49ers. Yeah, I mean, especially with Justin Fields, this team is going to be, again, very, very good as long as they stay healthy. That defense is going to be right back to where they left off a couple years ago. They they could make a Super Bowl run, just like any of these teams. The Seahawks, I have coming in last because even though the offense is obviously elite and amazing with Russell Wilson, DK Metcalf, um, the defense, for me, it's just bad. It's, it's really bad. They lost Carlos Dunlap. 
which is honestly a big hit for them. Bobby Wagner's honestly been looking like he's regressing. They lost their only decent corner in Shaquille Griffin. Yeah, and, and uh, Andrew, uh, or not Andrew, uh, their safety that they, Jamal Adams, he looked not at all like he ever played in, in uh, New York. Like the defense, it's just really bad for me. And I just don't see them coming out on top on this division, even though they very well could. This is a great, great division. NFC South. Um, this is also kind of tough for me because for me, the Bucks are easily winning the division. They're going to be exactly the same in my opinion because uh, they literally just focus their money on bringing everyone back. They'll use their draft pick probably on a running back or a defensive player. So they might get a bit better there, but otherwise I see them being the exact same team. Still going to be very scary. The Saints regress a bit uh, without Drew Brees. Now, Jameis Winston could actually play better in some aspects, especially under Sean Payton. However, their defense is looking a little worrying. I mean, they lost Trey Hendrickson and David Onyemata, who were pretty big uh, you know, contributors to that defense, even if they didn't always realize it. Um, and then with the stuff going on with Marshawn Lattimore, the corner room is really, really bad. They lost Quan Alexander. So, you know, the defense is looking a little worrying and the offense already is meh, you know? So I think this is a Saints team that's still going to make the playoffs. They're still pretty good, but they're definitely going to regress. Falcons are going to be much better than number four overall, but I don't see them making the playoffs. And I think they're going to be right in the middle of the road. You know, Matt Ryan, I don't think he's going to play any better than last year. Julio Jones is only getting older. Calvin Ridley might finally become like one of those elite receivers next year, but the defense is still pretty poor. They haven't really upgraded it in any way. So overall, I think they'll get better, but still be very middle of the road. And then the Panthers, you know, I think the Panthers are a team that, again, for the most part, are going to stay really the same. Hassan Reddick was a, a nice signing, but they've let go of some good players. The, for quarterback, they're probably just going to be having a uh, Trey Lance or Mac Jones sit behind Bridgewater for a year or two, because if they start him right way, I don't think that's a good decision. So, yeah, I think they're going to be wildly the same uh, as last year. So, NFC East gets a lot better in some ways. Washington are, is my dark horse Super Bowl team. I mean, this team is actually secretly really good. I think they have, like, because I, I predict them I'm drafting a linebacker and they can get a pretty good one there at number 19. They have the best defense in the league, in my opinion. I mean, like, if you just look at the defensive line, Montez Sweat, Deron Payne, Matt Ioannidis, um, the one other defensive tackle that's really good, but I can't think of the name right now. Uh, you know, and then Chase Young obviously looks like he looks like he's going to be one of the most ferocious pass rushers of the next decade. Um, you know, they address linebacker, and now you have you know William Jackson and Kendall Fuller. Safety and linebacker are yes less good, but they have such a good defense. And I think Ryan Fitzpatrick is that guy that can come in and at least get you to the playoffs pretty comfortably. And they might be, might even make a decent run. They could trade up for a quarterback too to develop under Fitzpatrick. You know, I I just I like the possibilities for this team. They're young, they're deadly and dangerous, and I really like that with Washington. Cowboys much improved. The defense is still a big issue. I mean, I for personally, I think Demarcus Lawrence is one of the most overrated players in football. He's not that good. Otherwise, they let go of like the only other consistent guy last year in uh alden smith their linebacking room is looking meh i mean they signed keanu neal to basically replace sean lee even though he's more of a weak side linebacker they'll address corner and safety in the draft but i still don't see it being that good they're a team that you know they're getting prescott back their offense is going to be great i just don't trust mike mccarthy as a coach honestly that much anymore and their defense is still really poor and i think it's ultimately going to hold them back from the playoffs Giants at 8-9, another team that I think is going to be right middle of the road. They're getting Daniel Jones, a great receiver, obviously, and Kenny Galladay. Um, but I feel like their defense got a little bit worse. I don't know how much they're able to upgrade it through the draft, really. Their offensive line is still a big concern. And honestly, I don't know if Daniel Jones is the guy moving forward. So they just have a lot of question marks. I think they'll be pretty middle of the road team. And then the Eagles, what a dumpster fire this team is. I mean, they have the saddest part of the Eagles is that, is that they have so much talent. Like, they have some very great players. Their offensive line was unfortunately hurt all of last year, but they have some great offensive linemen. 
They have some great defensive linemen. They have a great quarterback. But, like, they've always just had such poor coaching. Howie Roseman is the worst GM in football, uh, besides Bill O'Brien, who's not in football, obviously, anymore. But, um, yeah, I mean, it's just the team has so much talent, but it's just being wasted uh, because they just don't know how to coach. And I, I literally think that the Nick Sirianni hiring was just for him to be the Howie Roseman's puppet. Yeah, I don't see this team being good at all at next year. I, like, they'll probably be worse than last year, honestly. Then moving on to the NFC North, our last division. The Packers come in winning the conference at 15-2. and two. They're going to be the same or better. I don't see any reason why they got worse. And they'll probably uh, address uh, cornerback, linebacker. They're getting Devin Funches back, so that's great. Uh, yeah, this is going to be a really good team again. Vikings are going to be much better, but still not playoffs in my opinion. I think the defense has to just undergo some major renovations. Uh, you know, Patrick Peterson's fine, but he's old, and he really looked falling off there at the last year. And uh, who was the other corner? Or, like, the guy from the Bengals. I don't see him, like, Mackenzie Alexander. I don't see him, like, elevating the defense. Uh, yeah, just, again, great pieces on the team. The offense is pretty solid. I just don't see them making the playoffs, and I don't see them being that good of a team. The Bears. Uh, boy. So, let me get this straight. You cut all-pro cornerback Kyle Fuller. Thanks for giving him to Denver, by the way. To sign Andy Dalton to replace Mitch Trubisky? I'd rather have Mitch Trubisky, and I'm not even a Bears fan. What? I don't know what they're doing. I I don't I I don't know what they're doing. They can go tackle wide receiver in the draft. It really doesn't matter to me. They're gonna be a bad team next year. The one thing that was making this team meh at the best was their defense and then they just decided to go and get rid of Kyle Fuller and I don't see them being better than last year obviously they're going to be worse and Andy Dalton's a big downgrade for Mitch Trubisky in my opinion yeah this team's going to be pretty poor and then the Lions you know got a quarterback didn't sign literally anybody downgraded at quarterback from Stafford to Goff lost Galladay yeah this team's going to be really really poor next year would no normally be the number one pick, but the Texans are even worse, so they get the number uh, probably two pick. But, yeah, so if we're looking at the uh, playoffs here, Browns and Packers get their number one seeds and get the bye week. And then we have some great matchups there in the playoffs. You know, Chiefs, Patriots, Bills, Chargers, and Titans, Ravens round one. Those would be some great games. Rams, Saints, Buccaneers, and 49ers, and then Washington and Cardinals also some great games. That would be a very good playoffs. And our playoff predictions, as well as award predictions, are going to be coming in the next video. But that is the video. If you guys did like, don't forget to leave a like, subscribe, hit the notification bell so you never miss an upload. Thank you guys all for watching, and I will see all you guys in the next video. Bye-bye.